hey, you guys are late. We're changing a compressor and a water pressure control valve. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining things because it's pretty obvious what I'm doing. But if you enjoy watching those sort of things, by all means, keep on watching. If you guys end up liking the video, make sure you hit like. So let's go ahead and get started. Come on, I already got stuff inside there. What we have so far, so we had belts that were the wrong ones. So we've got some new A35 or A38 belts on there. As soon as I'm done with that, we've got to get that compressor changed here on the cabinet. Unfortunately, this compressor's shot. I uh, tried bypassing it, getting it going, it just would not do it. So, I've got a brand new one ready to go. Luckily, the dining room is not open, so I'm able to set some of my stuff where I need to set it. I've got a brand new compressor to put on, along with all the normal start components and stuff like that. The other thing is our water pressure control valve here, head pressure control valve, whatever you want to call it. This one here broke loose on the capillary tube, and it goes right there to the discharge line. So we're going to undo that and replace it. It just takes the water as it comes into the machine, opens and closes to maintain a certain discharge uh, pressure, whatever you end up setting it at based off of the uh, tension on your valve there. You can smell this thing. Doesn't smell very good. Gotta love it when they don't get an exact match. These are bent differently. Looks like it's about the same size. Now that one there looks like it's on the outside or this one's on the inside, so that's gonna be a little backwards. Suction port's the same at least. 105G, 105G, 6660, good number. Uh, 134 puke, 230, 230. Probably one of those reconditioned ones you see on YouTube where the guy cuts it open with a bottle jack and uses a couple live wires and a welding rod to put it back together. The only thing that's a little different is MD there, which might be a date of manufacture of some sort, but we'll have to make it work. It might fit in there, I don't know. This one here is a little jacky. Might be able to make something for that. That's kind of a freaking mess. So I didn't have a regular 90 on the truck, so I just took one, chopped the, uh, the bell housing off of it. We're gonna make it fit right back in there. Just use my uh, little Milwaukee saw, uh, little grinder thing. So it actually fits perfect into that one there, but does not fit. Oh, look at that. Nope, see, it doesn't fit either way. It doesn't wanna fit into that one there. And it doesn't want to fit into this one here. It's a weird flipping size, and I don't know why they didn't keep it normal, but obviously they didn't. We're gonna go ahead and do expand a sledge in that thing. Might actually just use a spin sledge. We went ahead and made a little cut on it. I think that there's gonna fit a lot better. Look at that. That's a pretty much right at vertical. Should be able to get on there and off there quick enough that we shouldn't have any heat go up here, but we've got a wet rag just in case.
get some more insulation on that, not a big deal. But we got all the way around that thing, it looks like. Alright, right now we are pressurizing the uh, suction side. Locked off the high side and forcing it backwards through the capillary tube. Nitrogen off. It's starting to bite me. I'm gonna sit here and kind of blow my brace back out. That does have you know, after purging it, as far as we've purged it, you know that uh, it's not going to uh, have any oxygen left in there to actually oxidize. So give us a second to cool, and then we'll go ahead and cool it down. <laughs> We are going to put it through the high side like we were doing and make sure it comes through on the suction side because now it's got to go through the cap tubes to make sure that it uh, comes through. It's coming through. You know, by doing it up the high side, as you probably already know, the valves aren't going to let the uh, air come through. And it's coming through pretty good. Go ahead and do a pressure test on this real quick and soak the joints. Yeah, uh, re-insulate that one tube back here in the back, which was, uh, that's the tube that goes from the top to the bottom. Uh-oh. Got a leak somewhere. Yep, leak on the back side. We're gonna get our insurance pad in there. That'll block it. Should be able to get that sucker now without worries of burning all the wires up. All right, it ended up being a freaking joint on the very front. It must just not have pulled in there for whatever reason. But it's holding good now. Both sides. Sometimes it just uh, doesn't work out real easy when you can't get in there and worry about burning everything up. So. It doesn't help they didn't get me the exact compressor. I mean, they, they got the one that matched, but the people that built it screwed us by not putting any type of designation there. It would have been nice if I could have just stuck it straight into the pipe and been done with it, but life is what it is. Alright, so I could have pulled through the manifold and taken forever and not known whether or not I got all the moisture out of it, or I can just pull through the big hoses, which takes a couple extra seconds, a couple minutes at the most. That's why I got the long ones because they actually reach. Is it a pain in the butt? Yes, it is sometimes. But the reward is not losing a compressor shortly after. You gotta see how this thing's gonna react. Valve off and see how it starts to slow down. Then we'll do another pull down or two. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this water valve. It does not want to turn, which really sucks because I can't shut everything off. And that goes. I think all the way down to there. These are junk valves. Nice, we had some of those there, but that's a quarter turn or whatever, and it just, it's not wanting to turn at all. And we might be able to get it to go. It kind of gave a little something there. And that might have got it. If I got calcium, or a big chunk of something or another in it. Yeah, there we go. Must have been a chunk of calcium. Now it's working. Good. Now we get this out of here. Get on the back side with the 90 degree tool and take it off. Unfortunately, they put all these big heavy things on top of the unit and I can't take off that side like I want to. I might be able to take this one off and get in there a little better. I'm gonna need to, because up there is where that goes into the refrigerant line up there.
this was set for 230. This one's set a lot lower, so we'll have to tweak that in. The range is there that we need. The only thing I see here is we gotta put it like that. So when we get it in there, we gotta flip this head over, which has about been the deal every time since. So I've just gotta loosen these four screws and flip it. So I had to switch that back around. I've had to switch them originally, and I don't know, maybe this machine doesn't need it, I don't remember. Maybe it was an older machine I changed it on. I think it was an older machine. But, so I put it back the way it was originally. Got everything back together, got that there. Just gotta get this line over to there. So we're at 150. Just turning that valve there, we automatically jump to 400 and something. You gotta love these junk valves. They will lie to you every time. Let's see if it goes back down. Got everything bled out. Let's go ahead and zero out. I'm pretty sure this thing only holds like eight ounces. We can't test it out yet until we get that other piece done. We're gonna change that out, and since this has a valve cord depressor on the end, I'm just gonna put a regular stem in there. That way it can be changed next time, because these do go back quite often. Come on. You can see that's hitting the compressor right there. We're good to go on that. Get that silver dryer changed out of there. There's a reason why I did not cut it out, and there's a reason why I let this clamp down. This thing is a major pain in the butt to get back into place, and you'll move these lines all over the place trying to get them out. And there's not a whole lot of extra here to work with, and you can always put a piece on it. It'll be alright. This thing's got more moisture than what you're going to get from releasing it in that filter dryer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that straighter cord because it's coming through this direction. It'll blow on through and it'll thin out through here, otherwise it's got to go through the TXV. All right, so we got the filter dryer in there. I'm gonna date that here with the label. Got the everything hooked up. Just gonna evacuate and uh, see if we can get some of that moisture out. Filter dryer is gonna have to get most of it. We got a liquid indicator here with the green dots saying it's fairly dry, which is kind of surprising, honestly. Uh, other than that, let's go ahead and finish pulling this thing down. We're already at uh, 1500 and dropping, so let's see what we can get this thing at. This valve are off. Only ran for probably about a good five minutes. We're at 1600 and rising at a 2.9. 
micron a second. So it's obviously kind of moist. Go ahead and keep on a pulling. I did make a tool to test these valve core tools out because these things could be leaking and give you a uh, false sense that you have a leak and then you kill a bunch of time looking for a leak that don't exist. I just kind of spread out so that it won't vibrate into each other. Sometimes I'll wire time together. It's kind of a hit and miss thing of what I want to do with that. I kind of got some relief bins here. Just uh, when you go to get this motor out, which I just replaced not long ago, the uh, belt on it, um, it's a real bear and you usually have to squeeze it past all these uh, lines and stuff, which is a tree running a 16 pound section area. Probably gonna hop on the high side here in a second because it's coming down in temperature. We're just uh, cleaning up the uh, barrel there and we're getting ready to run the main one, which it did not seem like it dumped in correctly into the high side. So it did in the suction. I made sure the straighter pours out, so I hope I didn't solder or something to go. That's kind of luck I might have. Um, so it could be just who knows what. That's why I never take the tools out until I'm completely done. Never till you're done. Bad luck. Alright, so what is that then, Dish? Or... We're gonna take the damn Schrader core out. Yeah, we made a, a little bit of a mistake by not pulling on the high side. We technically we just did one hose. It's not the way I wanted to do it, but my gauge was on the low side, so I know that we were there and we held. That kind of explains why it took so dang long for it to come down. Today's one of the days where it's Monday. Absolutely. Luckily we pulled with the good valves or the good hoses. Otherwise, I'd have never gotten away with that. That explains why my pressure was not there, my head pressure, so I need to get my valve tuned in. Unfortunately, it's kind of satisfied now, so I'm going to have them start drawing on this, and uh, that'll make it run more, obviously. The compressor on the cabinet seems to be working close. It might need an ounce or two, which wouldn't surprise me. Fact is, we pulled it. They were put in 36 ounces, just like it's expected for. So we're doing pretty good. So a little higher than it should be. Let's see if we can adjust that a little bit. Get that down to 230, which I think is what the spec was. It's 235. That's right at 100 degrees. I'm okay with that. And our suction looks pretty doggone good too. We're not fluctuating up and down, so we didn't get um, any, uh, we didn't leave anything behind in the system when we evacuated. I'm not very happy about leaving that straight core in, but most people out there are just pulling on one hose. If you're lucky, or they're pulling through a manifold and a quarter inch hoses, so it still did a better job than what most are doing. It's, uh, and we actually verified it with the micron gauge. The filter dryer there is gonna do most of the work anyhow. Um, didn't get the perfect 500 vacuum, but now that I see that was pulling on the other side, that kind of explains it too. But it did level off and it stayed solid and locked up and did not move anymore. Yeah. Try to make sure all these wires stay away from things that rub. That loop's going to absorb any shake in between. Side glass is completely full. Well, I added about two ounces and we're running pretty normal hit pressure. About 70, 72 in here, so 82, 92. So around about 25 over ambient area. 14 pound suction ain't unusual. I'm not going to dump the head side back in there, but usually I'm running about eh, an 18 pound suction. So, but we don't go off just suction, head pressure, any kind of pressure. But everything else looks pretty good. It's all buttoned up. Okay. Sixteen and a half area. This reads exactly a half a degree too cold, so it put us right about 17.8 to 18 degrees. And that's on the first pull, so we're good to go. Right on the money. Yeah. Obviously, you gotta make sure the power's off when you're doing this. Right at 60 on that one. Both these, both of them work? Be working the same yeah, they're working now. Okay, good. Okay. Look, I'm getting out of here unless you need me to stay for anything. 
No, I'm just gonna get a signature, which whoever, whatever. Uh, yeah, new belts are on. Everything's working good. It hit temperature. You're at 17 degrees. Well, thanks for calling. I'm sorry we had to take a while to get down here. All right, we got the belts on there. Got everything back together. It's making good ice cream, and we are all set to go. All right, guys, that wraps that one up. Everything's working as it should as we went over it. Uh, the water control valve's all new, good to go. I made sure everything wasn't vibrating. Got the refrigerant charge way back in there. Got the cabinet uh, up and going. I added just two extra ounces, which it was probably an ounce in my hose. So it wasn't like I went extreme over, which those have a tendency to run a little bit low suction when uh, the capillaries start to get a little plugged up, which when you start having problems like it was having, uh, it's very likely that those capillary tubes could be uh, becoming plugged. Right now they seem to be fine, but you know, it, it just doesn't surprise me a whole lot. Other than that, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.